What stops a person from achieving their full potential in business or in our personal relationships? And why should we care? A study by McKinsey shows that if we all achieve our full potential, we could add $28 trillion to the global economy by 2025. All we need to do to achieve this is allow women to be equal to men in the labor market. That makes women a business opportunity in labor terms was twice the size of China's economy. Women are already a consumer force to be reckoned with, controlling up to 80% of consumer spending globally. We have to care about us women achieving our full potential. Still, we hold women back. According to the World Economic Forum, it will take 202 years to reach gender parity in the workplace. But we don't have to wait two centuries. We can realize women's potential much faster. I will tell you how. But why listen to me? Well, I'm Dr. Ilva Beckstrom. I'm a finance lecturer at King's College in London. I conduct research about gender bias in finance. Before academia, I spent 15 years in senior banking roles in the UK. I ran businesses and managed investment portfolios for wealthy men and women. Then I was the CEO of a fintech startup. And I have 15 years experience as a psychotherapist. I help people who struggle with relationship problems in their personal or indeed business lives. I've got a doctorate in finance, a master's in psychotherapy, and I'm the mother of two children. Having heard my short CV, I wanted to ask you, the audience, if you think that I have the competence to talk to you about gender bias today, please put your hands up if you think I do. Thank you for believing in me. In an ideal world, I would always feel the same. But because my topic is gender bias, I'm going to be honest about my own. I'm sometimes biased against myself. I, like many of us, I get imposter syndrome. And others around me also have a tendency to underestimate me because I'm a woman. Purely by being a woman, I have to work harder to appear competent. Like many women, I sometimes allow gender bias to hold me back from achieving my full potential. Before I move on, I wanted to run a little experiment with you. For this, you simply need to close your eyes and relax. Then when I say a few phrases, please focus on the image they create in your mind. Fighting like a girl. Throwing like a girl. Running like a girl. Please open your eyes and look at me. If what you saw when I first said running like a girl looks a bit what I'm about to do, please put your hands up. <laughs> Thank you. Where do girls get if they run that way? Nowhere. All we get is messy hair. But these are extremely powerful negative gender stereotypes. So I tried this at home with my seven and 10 year old. You know what they saw? They saw strong girls running powerfully and fast. And they are right, of course, because we were born with our biological sex. Therefore, at birth, we have equal abilities to reach our full potential. But then as we grow up, we, the society, create our gender associations and behavior. We learn to believe that female equals caring and careful, and male equals assertive and risk-taking. We therefore also learn to expect men to run, fight, and throw more powerfully than women, and therefore be better at business. These gender-based expectations are particularly powerful in male-dominated domains like finance. But I would like you to walk out of here today with two important messages. First, we need to stop putting limitations on people because of their gender. Nobody was born with gender-based limitations. Then women and girls, you need to change the way you judge yourselves. You are better than the stereotype. I'm better than the stereotype. 
We are all better than the stereotype. Everybody, please run at your full potential so we can run the world at its full potential. I'm doing my bit by standing here in front of you today. It's pretty scary. And I've got images of failing, but I'm doing it anyway. I refuse to let the imposter hold me back, and so should you. I'm from Sweden, one of the most gender equal countries in the world. But I spend most of my career in one of the most gender unequal professions, finance. In the UK, only 15% of senior execs in finance are women. And whilst the UK gender pay gap is about 17%, already high, women in banking earn 35% less. And when it comes to bonuses, women get less than half of men. Do we really think that women in banking are worth half of the men? Now, my research was, of course, inspired by my own experience at home and in the workplace. My banking job was fun, demanding, and full of opportunities. But I also experienced similar problems and challenges to those of other women, being on alert to inappropriate behavior and fighting for your pay and say. Things became trickier after having children, both because people now perceived me as a mother, not a businesswoman, but also because of the pressure of doing the vast majority of childcare and organizing at home, whilst keeping my career going. You see, whilst men often make it because of the support of their wives, women often make it despite the lack of support. Behind every great man is a great woman, but what's behind every great woman? Chores, guilt. My maternity leave cost me my book of clients, and it was made clear to me that women, or mothers rather, who work, cause problems both at home and in the workplace. I didn't speak up because I was afraid of losing my bonus, typical bankers, or being perceived as difficult. I ended up leaving to run an entrepreneurial venture, do a PhD, and transition my career into one that allowed me to fulfill my full potential and be the kind of parent I wanted to be. But financial services had lost yet another high-performing, high-potential woman, me. There is a lot of research about gender difference in investment, investment decision-making. We find that women lacking confidence feel they know less and shy away from taking risks when managing their own money. To understand how this has come about, let's take a look at UK history. The London Stock Exchange was founded in 1698, but it wasn't until 1973 when they allowed women to become members. 1975 was the year when women gained the legal right to open a bank account in their own name without a male signature. Until 1980, women didn't have the legal right to apply for loans in their own name. This means that my mother, despite working as a nurse, wouldn't have been able to buy a TV on credit without my father signing the form. Now, we may now have the legal rights that we need, but remember, despite being a labor and consumer force to be reckoned with, it will take two more centuries to reach gender parity in the workplace. This means that no one in this room, nor our children, will experience it. But things are changing because we now live in a world where men spend more money on shoes than women. <laughs> you see? Gender attitudes and behavior are up to us. We, the society that created them, we also have the power to change them. But as recent history shows, modern finance was created by men for men. It's got a male biological sex. By excluding women, it created, it developed a very rigid male gender with a stiff 100% quota for men until the mid-1970s. That rigidity is displayed right there on the screen, a typical phallic symbol where bankers work. Of course women are going to feel less confident in there. Now, I know from my experience in finance and psychotherapists, psychotherapy that relationship skills and the ability to connect with other people emotionally are critical for being successful in business and in our personal lives. Banks also know this, and they pay to develop these soft female skills among their staff. But 
Research shows that entrepreneurs who use these soft skills and display emotional traits in pitching competitions are less likely to be fund funded. funded. And when evaluating entrepreneurs, venture capital partners ask men how they intend to grow their business, but they ask me, women how they're going to manage risk. Women's ventures end up receiving only 2% of venture capital funding. A tiny fraction of that goes to women of color. When in banking, I know so we were less successful at attracting female clients. And just like how I felt misunderstood and misjudged, we seem to misjudge these women. To find out more, I decided to combine the worlds of finance and psychology into a PhD to study what happens in the relationship between financial advisors and their clients. I found that advisors judge women, men and women differently. They judge women to have less control over their investments. And women are often recommended to invest in lower risk portfolios, which limits their, their potential for higher returns. There seems to be an agreement that women are not as good at investing or as worthwhile to invest in as men. But they're wrong. Because despite being underfunded, women's business ventures often outperform men's and the performance in the personal portfolios is often greater. So women are both good business and good for business. We just need to stop underestimating them. Overconfidence limits men's performance. Banking has suffered greatly from male overconfidence. We all have. In 2009, the bank I worked for went under because of excessive risk taking. I wonder what investment decisions female CEOs would have made during the crisis. You see, in 1903, a woman started a bank in the US. In the 1929 Wall Street crash, when 650 banks failed, hers survived. Why? Because her strategy was not overconfident, it was competent. Where were the female CEOs in 2009? And where are they now? We need to stop thinking that confidence equals competence. In my research, I also find that women want to do business with companies that hire senior women. And they invest 11% more if they have a female advisor. Still, only 15% of advisors are women. I was one of them. By not recruiting or indeed retaining more women, financial services is losing opportunities and losing money every single day. We need to de-genderize finance, make it gender neutral. There's nothing wrong with us women. We don't need to change. Instead, to be successful with this largest growth market, financial services need to listen to us, the women. Then we need to de-genderize parenting. By making it gender neutral, fathers will be allowed to parent just as much as mothers, and women don't have to feel guilty like I did about having children. If we fix this, we all win. We will improve our economy, we'll create more equality in business, and our personal relationships. Therefore, before I leave you, I want to ask two important things of you. First, don't let anyone's gender determine the contribution they can make to the world by pushing your own expectations onto them. Allow them to be the best that they can be, regardless of whether they identify as female, male, or another diverse gender. Women and girls, don't be the stereotype. Role model your full potential. Run like the real woman you are. Invest like a real woman and demand to be invested in like a real woman. Let's realize our full potentials as individuals and as a society. Let's run business and the world like real women. Thank you.